Support for the Boner Planet Podcast is presented by Dead Down Wind, Tinks, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Burris Optics, Dead Ringer, The Grind, Bomar Archery, Element Outdoors, Reveal Cellular Camera, HHA and HHA USA, Black Eagle Arrows, Cobra Archery, Camp Chef, Novix Outdoors, and caffeine support provided by Deer Camp Coffee. Hey guys, welcome to the Bowhunter Planet Podcast. Myself, Dave Thomas, tonight, along with Jamie Nopum and Kevin Conlin, which haven't been on in a while. So that's good to see you guys. How are you guys doing? Good. Good, good, good. man. I'm happy to be here with uh, our friends over at Gearhead. Oh, there's Tib over there with the little side comment over there. Skip <laughs> from Gearhead, how are you, man? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yourself? We are doing yeah. excellent. This is our third or fourth podcast of the night. So we are ready to go. <laughs> Me and Tim are just ready to keep rocking this out with great information so let's start with gearhead archery a little bit of a history lesson i guess you tell us about the brand a little bit maybe how it's formed and and kind of how it started all right well you know we started in 2008 so we've actually been at this a little bit um there was just a couple of us and the goal was always to come up with different designs and then license them to other companies you know so we've been you know, we didn't really want to do things like other people. We just wanted to have a free mind and a, and a clean slate and just kind of design things like anything is possible. And that's, that's kind of what we've, we did back in the day. And then um, fast forward uh, 2015, we started producing bows and we, we started selling to, um, we, get, we took it on as a, as a bow company that we're actually selling to pro shops and individuals and stuff like that, where before we were just trying to sell ideas. So that's, that's kind of, so we're, we're in our seventh year right now. So as wow. selling, selling to um, shops and, uh, and bow hunters. I feel like the, you know, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong and your thoughts, everybody else, but I feel like the gearhead uh, marketing uh, when it comes to the, the, the video photography and the imagery and things we'd see at like the shows and stuff has always been very well done. And I think like everything I've ever seen about gearhead has always looked really cool and engaging but to be honest, if I'm being honest here, the bow yeah. is very engaging looking. That's the thing I see it. I'm it like, is. what is this? You know, yeah. like it's an whoa. eye catcher, no matter yeah. which one you're looking at. Everybody's you guys gotta have touch done a it. Great job exp- expanding out your product line and what you guys have to offer. And I can't wait to kind of hear what you guys are are, are doing this year and in the coming years here. But uh, man, the, the, just the looks of it and yeah, the the, the photography and the way that you kind of capture that digital image that new image that you guys are doing is just absolutely awesome well we don't want to be like anyone else we want to keep pushing the envelope to what is possible in archery so that's that's what we kind of keep pushing on um like i said that you know, we've made a lot of mistakes along the way too and starting a company you always look back and it's like oh if i would have done this or i should have done that and i mean the first bow we came out with was an 18 inch bow that the size was determined by how small we could make it and still hold a peep location. So, you know, it ended up being 18 inches. And, uh, and we were into the backpack style, minimalistic, you know, go in five, six miles, and we want something lightweight, compact that we could hunt with. So we, we weren't really looking at what our customers wanted at that point. We were just looking at what, what do we want to hunt with. And that, that's kind of what gravitated to the, the smallest bow. And then as we got into it, it's like, well, the customers want bigger bows. So we, we kept getting a little bit larger now we even have a 40 inch bow for your target hunters so you know we we've kind of reached out and really covered all the categories in the in the bow hunting lineup and then we added a crossbow and we got a slingshot and and just other things too that's just it's just fun to shoot yeah so so tell us about the the backpacks like how this works so the, the bows will actually fit in them or on them somehow this, some of them like the the 18 the 20 and the 24 we all made them with um to make them be part of a backpack system where they that actually when you're packing in they would go inside the pack and you travel to your hunt area or, or you know i get a lot of comments of people that mount lion hunt with dogs they really like the backpack feature because they can put the bow in the pack and they can keep up with the dogs in heavy snow and and just really moving quickly and then when they get to the tree they can take their their bow out of the pack and it's, it's ready to go so um that's kind of what we um we designed the smaller bows to be sold with a pack 
But then listening to our customers, some people wanted to buy the bows without the pack. So we kind of split the pack out where now the pack is an option. If you want to buy a, a pack with, with your bow, you can. But for the most part, uh, we sell most of them now without the packs, but they do, they do fit real nicely into, into a couple of different pack sizes we have. Yeah, that's so cool. I, I love that idea. We're, we're really big into like small things here. So like, especially with bows and like getting them compact. And I love the idea that that's made to do that. That's so cool. Um, yeah, so what's your top seller? Uh, actually, the, the 24 inch is the best seller, followed by the, the 20. Uh, what really helped us in the last few years is saddle hunting. It's become really popular, and, and those size bows just really fit well with the saddle hunters that are going in lightweight. And uh, some even mentioned how, like, if they're positioned on the left side of the tree and the deer comes to the right, they can actually bring the, their bow underneath the bridge and they can actually reposition really easy to get to get the shot on the other side of the tree so um That's so yeah, cool saddle hunters really have kind of come come towards us a lot with uh with our design as far as you know i know you guys have won some things i was just about to click this button here but you guys have won a ton of awards with these bows right a lot of well that's where it's kind of frustrating that we're not a big brand yet because you know we we go and we shoot vegas and all these other tournaments and you know we've won the vegas bow hunter uh class three years in a row Wow. winning it it's like um in 19 we swept the podium there were 316 archers there were eight shooting gearhead and we had we had five in the in the top 10 so i mean there's there's something to be said about that and and we're also mm -hmm. not buying the shooters we basically the people that are competing are buying their bows and they're they're competing for the contingency well we might give a little bit more contingency to encourage them to shoot our bows but you know still in the field of two or 300, we're still always near the top. That's wow. pretty cool. That is That's awesome. amazing. That is really cool. Um, so, you know, the bows, the, let's talk about the bow themselves. Like let's, I guess let's talk about the Disruptor Pro uh, 24 or, what, or whatnot. So the bow, you know, obviously we've done the video here. We know a lot about it, but I guess tell people in your thoughts, like what's the biggest, like what makes this the Disruptor, right? What is about this bow? is what, you know, why you guys built it, I guess. Well, you know, we come up with a disruptor name because we felt being relatively new into the archery, even though we're seven years, they still look at us as we're, we're a newcomer. Uh, we needed to do something to, to disrupt the marketplace. And I look at the disruptor and it's got all the features and all the performance of your $1,000, $1,100 bow for a couple hundred dollars less. So we're, you're just trying to, you know, we felt we needed to disrupt the market. So we looked at it as giving, you know, a really great shooting bow with all the features of the, and even some features that other bows don't have, like the slider grips and the picker grip system and, and things like that, that we really bring value to the, uh, to the marketplace with, with the Disruptor line of bows. Yes, this bow is so cool, uh, Skip, to be honest. I, I, I'm very impressed by the bow. You know, people don't realize like what a gearhead bow is or how it works. And I think sometimes people just get a little nervous, like, oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if that would work. But when you shoot this bow, you'll know it's a sweet shooting bow. <laughs> and, I, you know, you're just blown away when you see it. You're like, oh, that thing probably won't shoot that great. But then you're like, wow, you know, that thing really knows how to shoot. A, shoot. It's just so comfortable. Um, you know, one of the things people don't realize is the flexibility of the bows. And it's one thing I try to get through on the video we did on the bow is just that the, the, the changes you can make in the bow. So I guess, can you tell us about all those different changes? I know there's so many different things you can change. Well, for, for people that want to tinker, I mean, first of all, it converts right to left-handed, which, you know, it, that, that's not a real big deal because if you're right-handed, you're right-handed. If you're left, you're left. But for a left-handed person, a lot of times getting a bow, it's either a special order or down the road, if you want to change bows, if you're lefty, you're kind of stuck with it where you can actually convert this bow back left or right-handed, which is, um, a good feature because of that but then on the pro it's got a it's got a rotational mod on the cam system and there's also three different string posts so we have like an a b and a c post where basically we ship it at the b post but then the a and the, and the c post you can short string it or long string it to change how the draw cycle feels so if you want to build all your weight up front uh, you can put it on the C post. And if you want to have it where it's over rotated and a smoother draw cycle, you can put it on the C post. And that also plays a little bit around with your, um, your draw length too. But to, um, to offset that, the rotational mod, you can change your uh, draw length in half inch increments for a total of four inches. 
And then if you, you put a slider grip on top of that, well, now you can move your grip forward and back, uh, four and a half inch, back an inch and a quarter, and you can move it uh, left to right, uh, three eighths in eighth inch increments. So you can really, um, Aaron Tedford that was shooting um, quite a bit in the ASAs, he liked the slider grip because he could he could play with his grip without changing his his sight tapes or his or or any of that. He could just kind of play around to see what he liked the best and. Uh, and also, too, when you're, you're tuning, a lot of times you get the tear out with the grip rather than moving the rest. Yeah, that, that left to right, being able to shoot left-handed or right-handed, actually, you know, it, it seems like it's a small thing, but that's got to be big when it comes to uh, dealers, right? Yeah. I mean, dealers are able to keep this bow, and they can fit anybody that walks in their door. Yeah, yeah. Then that, that was kind of the mindset behind the, the uh, Disruptor Pro Series was that a dealer could set up anyone that walks through their door. It's not like you're, you know, you're really oh I can't get you that because we all know if you're going shopping for a bow you're going to buy a bow that day you don't want to hear oh I can get you one in two weeks or I could you know you want to you want to go home with a bow yeah 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 and and you have um just talking about your lineup a little bit more um I know you mentioned you have full lineup you guys launched um crossbow as well oh come on no hold on hold on let's not go there yet I got a plan Tim you're getting you're jumping ahead you're jumping ahead on this conversation Skip, what I wanted to do is just say, I'm going to show something on the screen and all these guys here are going to drool and tell you what I've been telling you for, for, for years about your crossbows. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen now, Tim, because you're beating me to my, to my, uh, my punch here and let's hear it. <laughs> what? No, not from you. I can tell you right now, all these guys on this call are crossbow shooters. And they're drooling right now, looking at these pictures. And I wanted to, I just wanted to do it this way. Cause if you look at the price and you look at that bow, you're like, wow, this is it, like unbelievable. It is definitely, I mean, you could tell right off the top, it's made by gearhead, right? I mean, you have that design that just flows right through from your compounds over to your crossbows and it is a sick looking bow. Not going to lie. I mean, it is in, in Dave's not wrong. I mean, the price that you see on this for what you're getting on this bow is absolutely awesome. Um, I've read up on it a little bit. I haven't got a chance to shoot it yet, but this crossbow absolutely looks amazing. Um, tell me what's going on, though, with the sizes. So you got you got different sizes that you can pick from. What well, are those? It, mean? It's basically different weights. So you, you can either, like, you can make it, it's just different limb options. What we tried to do is we tried to take our T18 and make it into a crossbow where it could be like a bow or a crossbow. But the struggles we ran into is, is mounting our bow horizontally. When you would draw it, it wanted to rotate back into the stock portion. So we actually had to build it up to give it more strength in that area. So then it became its own entity of a crossbow. But it basically has the same string and cables of our T18 vertical bow. Um, you know, it's a 42 inch string, it's got the same strands. So, and then- wow. We do regular cool. arrows with it too, so it's it's a lot quieter than other crossbows, and it's it's actually not as front heavy. It's 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 lighter, even though in the last couple of years you've seen the crossbow market get narrower and more yeah. well balanced. But um, you know, for back in the day, and how the crossbow even came about is is you know we were going around trying to show our bows, and you know we had a meeting with Shields, and and you know back that was before the Raven. Uh, big push but and they said if we produced a crossbow under five pounds um, you know that we'd own the crossbow industry so we put everyone on and we came off a carbon fiber crossbow at the time and it weighed 4.5 pounds and it shot regular arrows and it's just but <laughs> from this. Time it took us to produce that well raven hit the scene and everyone seemed to want a raven but um i i really love our crossbow i mean i i shoot it a lot um i've competed a little bit in the asa's not as uh not as good as the, some of the, our regular shooters, but I, I, it was actually important for me to shoot the ASAs because I could see what needed to change on our crossbows to make them better. So from, yeah. from that guy, that's what I needed to do. And um, I just like it because you have so much versatility. You can, you can shoot regular arrows. You can shoot a, a gold tip, a black eagle, a victory. You know, you can shoot a 400 spine, a three, a 340 spine, a 300 spine. I mean, you can, you can really play with what you're using out there. And um, th- the main thing is the knock. It needs to have um, a knock where when the safety pushes off, it doesn't push your, your arrow off the string. Because once you knock it onto the string, it becomes a rail system at that point. It's, it's hovering above the rail. I just use the ah. rail 
to register the arrow back into the trigger box. But once you knock it, it becomes a rail assist system and you don't have to lube your rail. Um, you have choices in rest. You can use a bow doodle or a whisker biscuit and you can paper tune it. It's just got a really, a lot of really cool features. And it's, it's just, it's really fun to shoot. It's really fun to hunt with. Now what, what's the difference between the target, the target crossbow and the other one? So all the specs are the same. The only difference between the tactical and the target, the tactical breaks in half. It's got a, it's got a precision dovetail in the center and you can slide it apart and it, it comes in a field pack. So basically, <laughs> no way. That's pretty cool. Hell, Skip, you're killing oh, wow. me here. <laughs> Regular arrows and it breaks in half? What? Yeah, you almost feel like you're Rambo. You literally open your pack, you slide it together, and it's just click, 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 and you're just in in a matter of, well, people can can Google it and they can see it on the on YouTube and that. It, it literally, in in a minute, you can be, you can go from totally packed in a, in a pack until you know you're ready to shoot. That's pretty wow. awesome. Not gonna lie. Yep, <laughs> what's I'm going on man. behind that Picatinny? Uh, what's going on behind the Picatinny rail on that stock there? Is that uh, a crank for? Uh, no, the, no. It, um, it uses a rope. It uses a rope cocker to cock it. Um, it also has a really easy draw cycle. So a lot of times I'm I'm just hand cocking it. Okay. But it does have. Um, like with the are button, Kevin. I think all he's the way like a, back. All the way that's back. That's a cheek then. rest, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a cheek piece that that lifts up and down to for how okay. you. Oh, position. okay, nice. But also too in the the back there, uh, behind the trigger box, there's another bracket that you can put anything AR on it. So you can put like a mag pull, or you can put like a really lightweight uh, type of a a stock on, it, if you will. Or, I mean, you can really, um, you can really customize it for however you know you want your crossbow to be. Mm -hmm. uh, even the bottom side is all picatinny. The bottom side, so you can put like a flashlight or what, whatever you know. People. One thing I found with archery and that there's no one size fits all. Everyone likes things different, and the more options you can give, and the more versatility you can bring to the table, you know, the more appealing that your product is. Because you know, people will argue all the time. Oh, I like this. No, I like that. And it's just like you know, just give them, give them what they want give them everything right i mean that's kind of what you're doing with this it's absolutely awesome yeah that i don't know what to awesome. say i don't know what to say skip this crossbow is i mean if i was you this would be the that's first thing cool. pushing the crap out of this bow is un freaking believable i can't believe what i'm seeing i didn't realize it broke in half i can't believe it takes a regular arrow like i i didn't no, know that, these that is things. i mean that in and of itself is a game changer in the industry this I mean, you like, think about that. Like, if, if I'm shooting one of your one of your compounds and I have your crossbow, I don't yeah. have to buy extra equipment. That's crazy. Yeah, it's actually, actually my crossbow, I'll I'll shoot like a twenty a twenty seven inch length arrow too. Like most of your crossbows are like a twenty inch or twenty two. Yeah, that's um, true. I got I got it set up. You know where I like to keep my broadhead in the cage area just from a safety standpoint. So twenty four yeah. inch arrow works pretty well. Um, but sometimes I'll shoot like a 27 in competition because I, I think the the longer arrow gives me better stability in flight. That's just my head thinking. So Skip, uh, looking at these bows, I mean, these prices are extremely good prices, to be honest, yeah. in my mind. When I look at this, you know, $1,550 and $1,300 is a really good price for what I see. Yeah. Is there a way, and I'm just throwing this out there because I'm always questioning everything. Is there a way to make it cheaper? It is. So, so, you look at, so everything on that crossbow is machined. I mean, everything's machined. If you look at the trigger mechanism, it's got six bearings in the trigger mechanism through the, um, through all the different linkages. Um, you know, most crossbows, they're a plastic uh, style stock. And that's like, uh, you know, that's much, once you get past the molds, it's a lot cheaper to produce them than actually machine every component on it. But that's also the nice part of ours is we can be more flexible in not having the big costs set up in the molds and being able to machine everything. So there's kind of a, a give and take there on, on that. But I mean, every, every part of that crossbow is, is machined. You know, there's no, nothing, some of the purchase parts like the, the Ford grip and that obviously they're, they're a purchase injection molded part, but I mean, from everything else, it's, it's all CNC. Yeah. That's uh, I, 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 you know, I would be marking the crap out of this. I'm not like, absolutely. <laughs> this thing is like, this thing right here, I'm looking at this thing in my head, like, this is right on par with the best names in the industry. 
making crossbows and it's like half the cost of those those bows i'm thinking of so like that's this is like this market should be huge for you guys right now this is just i got a video shooting in inside not advocating shooting 100 yard shots like but i got three arrows all touching at 100 yards you know i got i got a five eighths inch but i can tell you too at that distance the arrows are more important than your weapon they have to be matched everything has to be exactly the same and it's just it comes down to your crossbow is a machine it just repeats and repeats and repeats and your your arrows need to be exact in order to group like that at 100 so what kind of warranties it come with a lifetime warranty nice i mean i mean you can't run from your problems you have to you know it, it's comparable to anyone else's in the industry yeah and it's customizable like a lot of your bows are if not all of them uh by color too right you, you have different color offerings so what what we do on the colors you know initially when we started we had we had three different anodized colors we had a you know we wanted to be like a military bow so we had the the desert tan and the olive drab and then the black um it got to be a little bit of um an inventory nightmare with all the different colors and that so now what we do is we um obviously we we dip in a, a predator dip it can be snow camel it can be regular camel but um also we can do about any color in a cerakote so taken from the gun world uh it has a little bit more cost to it but it, you know the finish has to everything has to be sandblasted and prepared and then it gets cerakoted and then it comes back so it, it it has a little bit more work but you can actually you can do any color you want honestly awesome that's really cool let's get tell yeah. us about this t15 pro xl and t15 pro i mean this is what is, what is this exactly i'm trying to understand is this well, a bow fishing rig? we made that for bow fishing and actually the one who came to us i'll give him the credit is tim wells he's like he's like skip paul and paul is with us he's like i want something like a slingshot that you know i can shoot you know i can shoot small game or deer and bow fish and things like that so we went to work and that's kind of what we came out with was the, the t15 Pro and crazy. Action. This thing looks um, crazy. I can't believe I, you guys <laughs> engineered this. Like this is amazing. We've actually killed three deer with it, with with them too. I, I can, no I, can short, I can shorten the tubes and get it to forty five pounds and uh, at you know shoot over twenty yards. I mean it it shoots energy wise comparable to a longbow or a recurve. I mean wow. if I, I chrono it, I'm probably in the 160, 170 chrono on that on a hunting size arrow. That's um, so cool. It's so crazy looking. No, I can see Tim Wells shooting that right oh, now. Oh, for sure. Tim would shoot that in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right, let's see. That's the XL. Here's the other one. I, well, is this I a little like, less power? Yeah, I like the pro the best just because it, you know, when you're you shoot a lot, it almost becomes an extension of your arm. I like if you're standing up at the front of the boat and the fish runs, you can just swing with the fish and let it rip. And it it really does become, you know, your muscle your mind muscle memory just really comes into play and you don't even think about it. You just shoot it. That's so cool. That's gotta be the coolest bow fishing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's it's, crazy. It's Definitely the most innovative, no doubt. Hand, hand down. Talking, like the Illinois river with the flying carp and stuff like that. Um, uh, the Armstrong girls, they're out there killing them every, every weekend that they can. And they're just, they really, they're always sending me pictures. And they're, they're, it, How long have you guys had this? Um, I think three or four years. That's crazy. Yeah. All, all the years are kind of blending together. Like I said, I can't believe it. we started year seven this year, but it just seems that every year it just, the years so go by. You guys by also four. offer uh, like a larger size as well. Um, what, so what's the advantage to that? Are some hunters just like longer bows or? Um, like I said, everyone, archery seems like things a little different. The longer bows we got into from the target side of things. Uh, most of your target shooters like to shoot a 36 to a 40 inch bow. Uh, they like the string angle on their face a little bit better. Um, you know, we got into the 30 inch just because that is your more standard hunting size. Uh, that being said, you know, we really don't have any competition in the in the 20 and the 24 inch yeah. size yet. Tiny. And then also to the, um, all of them, you know, Pope and Young used to have a ruling that the bow had to be 30 inches in order to qualify, but they've taken that rule out. So any gearhead will now qualify for a Pope and Young class animal. Wow. 
and we do have the world record black bear was shot with a with a gearhead out of new jersey um, no way yeah did yeah. you ask him to ask add crossbows ah I, I, dave that will never happen nah. I'm glad. I'm there serious is, when I say this. Listen, this is serious. There's an organization they'll start that started up that, that do um they are creating their own record book just for crossbows. I had I had been invited to a Pope and Young, like it was like a summit of some sort, and they were talking like all their like the people that run it and all that. Mm -hmm. And they were you could ask questions. Like I was like on this like Zoom call, but I was I was watching this live thing they were asking like the media like how they could what they could do better and i said i said how about you guys allow crossbows how, how did that go over? oh my <laughs> they got they fart in church i don't think they liked my comment but they had all these reasons why and i just said well do you guys ever think about just accepting crossbows but not your main list like create a separate list like a separate pope and young that's made for crossbows and they said hell no basically but <laughs> I just was saying they're trying to grow. And I said, well, you're not going to grow a ton when, you know, you, without having things like adding your bow in, like you just say, stated and, or adding crossbows, right. You got to add things to grow crossbows, huge, right. There's so many people use a crossbow now, but, but I don't, I just don't feel like it's such a big deal. Like, why can't you just have a separate book that's for crossbows? Like, why is that a big deal? Like, well, there's, there's another organization that's just come out in the last year or so. And they, See, I, I measure for Pope and Young. I, I've gone through that whole course and stuff. And I, I was just out to Reno to their Pope and Young convention and stuff like that. So um, I kind of get it. But, you know, they're, they're still going to be a record book for crossbows. It's just going to be put together by a different organization. Got um, it. Yeah. And, and also, too, to that point, you know, back in the day, Pope and Young never, um, they never recognized animals that were taken over with a bowl that was 65 percent let off or more well oh, then it okay caught a little bit because all the manufacturers started making these bows that were 85 percent let off and the entries tailed off and so what they ended up doing is the first year if you had shot with an 85 percent let off you got an asterisk by your name well then mm. they just flipped the book so now what they have they have a recurve long bow book and then they have a compound book so they just they basically split it into two different categories that makes sense yeah and that's my point like i would just split them like have a couple categories either way but yeah. it's it, it but keeping it as themselves but anyway but yeah, this we, we is we ain't gonna change that yeah they ain't gonna change nothing oh. I, that, that was the conversation i heard but a lot of people were saying that to them that was part of the convention it was like some sort of summit thing they were doing but sure. they were definitely not uh interested in that kind of stuff um but anyway i got some good news for you um, i was waiting for this news yeah this is, i got some good news for you um so ever so we start we restarted our award ceremonies and uh we do a thing called the golden arrow awards and the golden arrow awards are once a year and we 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 ask the consumers to vote for the you know favorite bow brands and things like that we also have uh, choice awards and all that so um you have been selected well, well be... let me set this up real quick hold on a second so okay. so so there's a there is you know we've been around for a long time we used to do this you know four or five years ago kind of stopped it we restarted this year doing all these awards and uh, we started brainstorming about the different awards that we're going to do and one of the things that we talked about a lot and one of the things that is really kind of taking the bull hunter planet team not internally, but externally, is that if you watch Dave's videos when he does bow reviews, he does a lot of time talking about bow grips and mm -hmm. how much he loves bow grips. And like, it, there's not a video he can't mention without mentioning a bow grip in the video. And so it's become this running joke, not only internally, but everybody that watches our videos ends up commenting, oh yeah, Dave likes this grip on this bow. It's gotta be a good bow type of deal. <laughs> um, so without further ado, Dave, go ahead with your award. So you we, have we one. created a, gold, a, a Dave's <laughs> Golden Grip Award in which you are the winner of the Dave yeah. Golden Grip There's Award There's only one of them. 2020. Year. Holy smokes. This is serious <laughs> award, though. And this, this is, is serious. Joke, yeah. But the thing is, no one beat the Gearhead Grip this year. And the reason is, is you guys have the pick a grip, and it's amazing. Right. I mean, this was, like, hands down one of the coolest things I've seen. And to be honest, like, 
there's no way I wasn't going to find a grip that was going to work. You know what I mean? Like in, in this one, the one you sent me, the, the flat back was absolutely incredible. And, you know, to me, that was definitely the best grip out of all the bow manufacturers this year. Congratulations, sir. Well, thank you. Did we get like a plaque or something. That's well, you're getting a trophy. your trophy with the praying hands. <laughs> Uh, that's that's an actual trophy and you're gonna get a physical trophy but you're also gonna get a logo um a uh, golden arrow award gold logo you'll get that as well digitally so you'll have this uh, to put at your shop and you'll have uh the Ooh. digital one and this is not public yet so it'll be coming out right. soon but since we had you on the line i figure it's a good time to congratulate you on it cool you know i always thought our pick a grip system was really really because it it gives the archer so many options, you know, because so many times, like, oh, I don't like this grip, right? You know, it it, it lets you choose. Yes. And then, you know, and then from the standpoint of the slider grip, it like, it like takes that and amps it up to times 10 because now you can literally find exactly where you want that bow. So instead of adjusting yourself to the bow, the bow adjusts perfectly to how you want to shoot it. You know, it's just, I, I just, I, that's, I think that's one of our best features. Absolutely. And, and I, I mean, that is not only is it a good grip, according to Dave, and that's that's a good the thing. Best. It's the no, best. No doubt grip. about it. But it's it's one of the most innovative things that we've seen at Bow Hunter Planet in regards to that aspect of the bow. And th those it, grips don't get a lot of talk in the industry, right? That That's why it's kind of a running joke, because nobody really talks about grips. But you guys have taken that to the next level and provided, you, you solved the problem people didn't know that they had. Mm -hmm. because they didn't have a solution for it now they have a solution for it which is awesome right. yeah, yeah and I, and also too if that slider grip on you know people unknowingly will put grip torque into their bow well that allows you to take the grip torque out you know you don't have to change the way you're shooting the bow you can just change your grip to fit your style type of a thing makes really perfect cool. sense and I will be honest with you, uh, Skip, I, I do, I feel bad because I feel like you probably could have won another award on this if I had known more about that crossbow. Because <laughs> <laughs> the innovation on that is literally amazing. So let's, let's I, I, here's crossbow winning it. Let's, let's plan on that because I kind of got some ideas. So yeah, so we'll see where you go with your crossbows. But that yeah. there's so much innovation on that crossbow that I mean, that definitely would have won some sort of award had I known it broke down in half like that. It's unbelievable and shoots a standard arrow that to me is like two huge wins so we'll keep that in mind for 22 coming up or yeah and we'll we'll make sure something good comes of that because that's definitely something that needs to be you know looked at in the industry people might not realize that's happened you know or you have that type of thing so pretty cool congratulations golden grip winner only oh, one i can't <laughs> wait to, i can't wait to get done with this and, and, and get it on facebook here down the road probably oh not. yeah it's coming yeah, it'll yeah. be out soon. We're gonna launch this uh, pretty quickly here. There'll be a podcast going through the results, and then uh, and then it'll be and then it'll be public. And you're more welcome to send in a uh, video if you want to do a um, uh, exception speech video. You're more welcome to send one in, and we can we're gonna put those on the website as well uh, for companies. You can wait till you get it in your hand if you want. That's fine too. Um, but it should be pretty cool. Careful what you wish, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, so I love uh, it, man. Well, great, great things coming out of Gearhead, man. We can't, yeah, you know, can't thank you enough for, you know, always wanting to come on and talk about your your equipment that you guys are putting on. It is just so innovative. It is amazing to see kind of the creativity that you guys got going through your heads because, uh, Bard, I mean, it's it, it's hard to beat the innovation that you guys are putting out there in the industry. You know, to me, I always look at it from the first time we got one of those in. I said. And this looks like futuristic stuff, you know? I mean, that's what it looks like to me, like the future of bow hunting. Yeah. I'm going to share one thing with you guys real quick. This is the coolest picture I just saw it on your guys' Facebook page. Look how small that thing is. Tiny. That's so crazy. Yeah. I think that guy's from Finland. I mean, it's wow. hard to... Well, here's, you know, when we got into this, I only thought of bow hunting and archery as the United States. And it is impressive how many other countries we sell to i think finland is is probably one of our top dealers and you wouldn't even think of finland yeah i never thought of finland but they you know they've come on in a big way and they've you know they've been doing really well for us and then you think belgium and you know new zealand and australia and australia and, yeah yeah we were just talking about that today we had um shipped to us a promotional hat from a uh, bow hunter club out in australia 
Yeah. Um, so it is kind of interesting to see kind of the worldwide trend that you have. And I, if I'm not mistaken, we got a couple of uh, pretty, um, a couple of our members that are pretty active within our organization. Uh, they're from, I, I want to say it's uh, Switzerland, maybe, or maybe I can't remember, but it's like that Finland type of area. Well, we do got a guy from Finland. Finland. Yeah. Yeah. So very cool, man. It's, it's great to see that it, it is a worldwide thing, right? Yeah. And one neat thing about Finland, you guys maybe know this or not, that they have a whitetail population to hunt in Finland. Um, back in the day, they, uh, they, they imported uh, some whitetail from Minnesota. And, took okay. them over the boat. and I think that was probably in the six, the fifties or the sixties, North American whitetail did a story on it. And uh, now they have a hunting population of whitetails in Finland. So awesome. it's my, pretty cool. It's my goal some year here to get over to Finland and uh, and and shoot a shoot a whitetail in another country. That so would be at, amazing. Look at yeah. this yellow one. That's awesome. sick. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, that, that's that's the custom colors. Well, we can do any. She she sent me a chip of uh, what color she wanted, and we matched it. And that's what and that's what. She <laughs> so, that is sick. <laughs> that wow. looks so sick. <laughs> That is so cool. I love going through Instagram pages. It's so nice to see the community when it comes together, like on pages like this, you guys have all your fans, you know, mm -hmm. the product, different examples of the product. It's just so great. I love, love seeing stuff like this. It's very well, cool. We've been blessed by the people that shoot our bows because they, they tell everyone about it and they'll have people shoot their bows and, you know, they really are trying to help us grow the brand. And it's just the customers have have been really a grassroots effort to grow our to grow our company so i mean we've been we've been really blessed by our customers you can't beat Skip. that thanks man yeah. we appreciate you coming on tell us about it uh, you're always welcome on the show so if you get anything new you want to divulge and tell people about and more than welcome to come and spread the word here well 2022 we'll have some hopefully some even cooler stuff coming There's awesome right, can't wait nice. right now it's in the it's in the it's getting close. We're, we're shooting stuff right now. So it's, it's, I think 2022. Awesome. Really Love to hear it, man. All right, man. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And uh, make sure you guys check out Gearhead Archery online when you get a minute, uh, like them on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all those good things and uh, follow along. So, and have fun with it like we do. So thank you guys. Thanks, Skip. Appreciate it, man. All right. Thank you guys. All right, we'll see you next, everybody. Golden grip winner. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I had it here with me so I could hold it. I could just go like this. It's kind of similar. <laughs> is, is it in the box you sent me? Oh, yeah. Jamie's got it there. Oh, hold on. It's right here. Oh, he's got oh, it. Oh, he's, he's gonna, got it. He's, got this, he's gonna be shipping it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow. It's beautiful. That's probably the best pose for a grip that you could have got for a trophy. Cause... I guess I didn't really think of it as praying, but I guess I see why it looks like it's praying. I'm praying that was a good grip. <laughs> I'm going out and buy the trophy case now. <laughs> there you go. Give it a home. All right. Thanks, Skip. We'll see you, man. Take care. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye.